In this video, we are going to take a look at exponents which are rational numbers. So just to remind ourselves, a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction, a over b, where both a and b belong, are elements of the integer set. In other words, they're numbers like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, etc, etc. So basically, in a nutshell, a rational number is a fraction. Okay, so let's just have a look at um, where these rational exponents come from. If we have, for example, the square root of x to the power of 8. Remember that a square root is the number that you multiplied by itself that gave you the number under the root sign. So what do we multiply by itself to give us x to the power of 8? Well, when we multiply powers with the same base, we add the exponents. So we must have taken the exponent, which is half of 8, and multiplied it by itself. So let's just test that. x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 4. Multiply powers with the same base. We add the exponents. 4 plus 4 is 8. If we have the square root of x to the power of 4, what do we multiply by itself to give us x to the power of 4? Well, it must have been 4 over 2. We needed to split 4 in two equal parts so that we can then find out what those two things we were that added together that were the same that gave us x to the power of 4 in the first place. So let's now look at a cube root, something like the cube root of x to the power of 9. We now need to find the number that we multiplied by itself three times to give us x to the power of 9. And we're going to add that number. We would have added the exponents together to give us 9. So here, we need to split 9 into three equal parts. So x cubed times x cubed times x cubed. Let's just check. Multiply powers of the same base. We add exponents. 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9. Okay, so we can continue this and have a look at roots where we don't get uh, an exact answer, something like the square root of x to the power of 5. We can follow exactly the same principle. We know that the square root is going to be the exponent of the base halved in order to find the two things that were the same that you added together. So if we just check that, x to the power of 5 over 2 multiplied by x to the power of 5 over 2 gives us x. 5 over 2, add 5 over 2 is 10 over 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we can see that dividing it works. If we want to do the cube root of x to the power of 7, we need to divide 7 into 3 equal parts. So x to the 7 over 3 times x to the 7 over 3 times x to the 7 over 3 is x to the 21 over 3, and 21 divided by 3 is just 7. Okay, so... If we have a look at what's generally happening here, if we have the nth root of x to the power of m, and we want to find out what the value of that root is, we know it will be x to the power of whatever the exponent was divided by the type of root that we're looking for. Because the type of root tells us how many times we need to split that exponent up into equal parts. Okay, and that is your definition of a rational exponent. So you can go in both directions. If you've got an exponent that's a fraction, you can change it into a third. And if you've got a third, you can change the exponent into a fraction. Let's have a look at some examples where we apply this. 81 to the power of a half. So we know that we must have taken the base of 81. It was being raised to the power of 1 because the numerator was always the original exponent. And we must have been finding the square root of that number. And the square root of 81 is just 9. Number 2, 0, 064 raised to the power of a third. So we've had 0, 064 to the power of 1. And we are going to must have cube rooted it. The cube root of 0, 064 is 0, 4. Okay, in your homework book, there are two further examples for you to try, so please pause the video and try those without using your calculators. Okay, number one, the 0, 0, 9 to the power of a half is the same thing as the square root of 0, 0, 9, which is 0, 0, 3. 
125 to the power of a third is the same as the cube root of 125, and the cube root of 125 is 5.